Hey, what's up guys? It's an exciting day. My year long experiment is finally over and I'm gonna share the results with you. With the beauty of video and YouTube, if this is the first video you're watching, you didn't have to wait a year. And if you're curious what I'm talking about and stuff, for those that have been watching, I don't wanna repeat everything, but down in the description, I put every video in order that I made about this subject and then a brief description of what's in that video. If you're wondering some stuff about what I felt like and that sort of thing, I just don't wanna repeat everything and make this a long drawn out boring video. But to briefly summarize and recap what happened, I was just listening to a podcast one day, this Harvard professor who claims to be one of the leading researchers on anti-aging said, here's the supplements that I take to avoid aging and this is the newest, latest and greatest. So naturally I was like, I wanna try some of that. Now because the world of like supplements and anti-aging kind of gets that negative perception like snake oil and stuff, I was thinking, is there any way I could document this or kind of show that it did have an effect other than just my anecdotal feelings and how it made me feel, which is most likely contributed to placebo effect. So then I took a blood test, took the supplements for a couple months, took another blood test and compared the results. That's basically the first three videos that I made. What I was most surprised about is how many other people were interested in this topic. I got tons of comments and questions about the subject. So the next video I made, I basically just recapped David Sinclair's book and tried to answer all the questions that got brought up in the comments. A lot of people were watching my videos because they wanted to know what is it like to take NMN and resveratrol. And a lot of people also gave their testimonial saying like, hey, I'm this age, I take it, here's how it makes me feel in the comments. So because I knew that was information people were seeking, I went ahead and compiled all those testimonials, the good and the bad, and put them on a web page. I'll put that in the description. But if that's the kind of information you're looking for, you can just go to that web page and just read what people commented on how the NMN and resveratrol makes them feel. After reading Sinclair's book, I realized it seemed like, at least in the scientific world, the golden standard to measure age was looking at the human genome and all these methylation spots Specifically, a guy named Dr. Horvath started coming up with these age tests that he kept refining. And his most recent one, which is called the Grim Age, looks at over a thousand methylation spots on a human or animal genome. And based off of that and the aggregate data with that, apparently it's pretty good at predicting lifespan. And the way I interpreted that information was if scientists were able to figure out, hey, this thing, just call it thing A, if we can show that that slowed the rate or reversed that grim age test, that would be the beginnings of evidence that something is actually happening. Now I'm not a scientist, I don't have a lab and stuff, so I was just thinking, hey, is there any way I could possibly do that? So I did find a commercial product that spits out your age. Now there's a lot of these, and some of them, like inner age, that Sinclair actually endorsed, doesn't really look at methylation at all. It looks at other biomarkers. They list it right on their website if you're interested in what that is. And there are some that say, you know, they're based on the Horvath test, but they're not actually the Horvath test. And it's really confusing because, you know, there's different Horvath tests and it's progressed over time. Basically, the way I understand it is it started with like 350 points that they would look at of methylation and then grew into a thousand. And they're trying to pick the best ones. Again, I'm not a scientist. That's just the way I interpreted it. And these commercial tests say that they're based on that and they're proprietary. So you don't really know what they're looking at. But I picked one called My DNA. It's like 300 bucks for a test and thought I would try to use that as a tool to see if the NMN and resveratrol was having an effect on the rate at which I was aging. I just wanted to cover two other things about this whole process. One is I'm extremely grateful for all the support, the interest, and the comments that you guys put down. I learned a lot from you guys. Just to name a few, I realized initially I was taking a different kind of resveratrol than Sinclair was. I learned that there is actually some evidence that perhaps taking the NMN sublingual versus in your gut has a different effect. I learned that NMN in its raw form actually isn't shelf stable. And a really big thing a commenter pointed out was there was a flaw in the experiment I was gonna run. I was gonna run a six month experiment, basically take my age, take the NMN for six months, and then take my age again. And I would have nothing to compare it to. So they suggested do it, do that same thing, but without taking it and then with taking the supplements. 
so I could compare the two rates of change. So now my six month experiment turned into a year long experiment. And I feel like that change I made and then the way that I made my videos and stuff unintentionally created a lot of confusion and I should have done it different. The biggest thing is I released a video saying, hey, here's my six month test results. And the confusion was that that was when I did not take the NMN. So I took a test, took another test six months later, and I did not take the NMN there. Then over the next six months, I took the NMN and resveratrol, and then I tested again at the end of that six months. Those are the test results I'm gonna to share today. So I just wanted to clear that up and apologize for kind of doing a bad job of organizing all that and getting that out there. But hopefully if that was misinterpreted or misunderstood, it's clear now. So I don't wanna personally interpret my results and put ideas into people's heads. I think it's just best if I just show the facts, the data, and let you interpret that for yourself. I suppose the biggest disappointment is when I initially sought after this, I really had no idea like what was it going to say. I was actually thinking in my head, it was gonna say you're 33.25 years old based on this. After I got my first test results and realized it just gives one number for an age, I realized it's really not that accurate. And if you're just looking at six months, it's like, well, it doesn't even go to a six month accuracy. So unless I turn this into like a five year experiment, it just wasn't gonna be what I was looking for. All right, so let me show you my test results. All right, again, I don't wanna interpret this and make it mean anything, but I'm definitely curious what your thoughts are if you'd like to leave a comment below. Now I chose this test because it said based on Dr. Steve Horvath's aging clock. And I took the test three times all six months apart from each other. So December 5th, 2019, May 6th, 2020, for that six month period, I did not take NMN or resveratrol. Then another six months goes by, take it again on December 5th, but this time 2020. And during that six months, I did take NMN and resveratrol. Now there's a couple important things to note here. One thing is this line right here. It says the gray bars indicate the median of two standard deviations of the replicated tests, showing the reproducibility of the test. So I'm assuming they're talking about these gray bars, and I don't know what age this is and what age this is, but you can tell by these circles here on the first one, the beginning is pretty close to 33, and right in the middle is 35. Here, 33 is right in the middle, and again, 33 is in the middle here, 34, is roughly in the middle. So maybe this is 36, 35 and a half, I don't know. Another important thing to note is, according to this test, the number that this test gives got reduced by two from December 5th to May 6th when I did not take NMN or resveratrol. And in the following six months, it appears that it stayed the same. And obviously over that year, my real age increased by one year. I have no idea why, but obviously I'm delighted and happy when I read number two here where it says it means you are younger than 25% of the people your age. Then the next time I'm younger than 64% of the people my age. And then the most recent time now I'm 68% younger than the people at my age. Well, that's just great news. What's pretty neat is they track your previous tests. So it's just cool to see on December 5th, 2019, according to this test, I was 1.5 years older on this test than my actual age, but then one year later, I was able to become one year younger than what my age is. So I hope that trend continues. And then one thing that would definitely come to my mind if I was looking at this data is, besides the NMN and Ray's Virtual, what other lifestyle changes were made? And I did my absolute best to keep everything consistent. I am confident that I did not become healthier during this time in terms of diet and exercise. I can't measure stress, so your guess is as good as mine, but I would almost go as far as make an assumption with the whole virus thing that I would imagine it would go up, but there's no way to measure it, so maybe it did go down. I have no idea what contributed to this. Like I said, I'll let you draw your own conclusions. I just wanted to present the data. All right, guys, so it took a year to get to this point and I'm almost sad and relieved that it's over. I'm sad because I had a lot of fun doing this. You know, I like doing the biohacking, running an experiment on myself. Where I'm relieved is I really wish I could do some kind of experiment that is measurable and would actually show something. You know, this was kind of measurable, it's not that accurate, and I could have done a better job realizing that beforehand, 
but I really want to run some kind of experiment on myself that's super measurable. And you guys have great ideas. So please, if you have some good ideas, if you're interested in something, let me know what you're thinking. Again, the number one thing for me is that it's measurable. And what I mean by that is, you know, I can measure how much I weigh every day. That's something I can do and I can track it over time and see what happens. What I wanna avoid is just doing another experiment that's just anecdotal evidence and really isn't that useful or helpful. I appreciate everyone that took this journey with me. If you're interested in the topic, I hope you found this information useful. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.